Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today's 1 million by 1 million strategy roundtable for entrepreneurs. 1M by 1M, as you know, is the first and only global virtual accelerator for technology startups in the world. Our mission is to help a million entrepreneurs reach a million dollars and beyond in annual revenue. And in support of that mission, we do these free mentoring roundtables every week. This is the 488th session. We started doing these back in the fall of 2008. And that was an experiment which led us to launching 1 million by 1 million, the full acceleration program back in 2010. So it's been a decade that we've been doing this and over 150,000 people have been through these free roundtables. And of course we have private roundtables for our premium members only. So we spend a lot of time doing uh, online entrepreneurship strategy roundtables in this program. So the event is being recorded. You don't need to take notes. Every single roundtable recording is available on our YouTube channel, 1M1M Roundtables, and this one will be as well. On Twitter, we are at 1M by 1M and at Stromana. You're very welcome to follow us in either of those channels, and we publish a lot of interesting content. If you want to live tweet this show today, your hashtag is 1M1M. This is a roundtable not a broadcast, so we would like you to participate as much as possible. And these are the call-in numbers. We're not quite ready to um, ready for you to call in yet, but we will be. I will put this up a little bit later. We have some scheduled programming first, actually quite a lot of it. We have, we're going to start today's session with a conversation with Pamela York, founding general partner of Capita 3 and also founder and CEO of Atasi Ventures. Pamela, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Ramana. I'm really, really delighted to be here. Great. Well, tell us, uh, tell us a bit about your background as, as well as about the venture firms that you are working on. Sure. Well, I, I think we have some commonality. I, I started my career with a PhD in electrical engineering and uh, so a lot of my work very early on in my career was in what you would call deep tech and, yeah. uh, and hardware. And, uh, and I just very early in my career got exposed to the startup world. I worked for a company where we spun out 21 companies in a seven-year period. Um, mm. and, uh, Which yeah, company was that? It's called Sarnoff Corporation. Okay. If you remember RCA, uh, which was yes. around, the brand is still here, but obviously the company is not here anymore. But they had a corporate R&D center in Princeton, New Jersey. And in, um, in the process of GE acquiring RCA, they spun it out to become an independent company. So it was a thousand people, a hundred million dollar annual R&D budget that had to figure out, like any startup, what's my business model and how do I be sustainable? Phenomenal, phenomenal experience for a person coming out of a PhD program. So if you could if you could figure out how to raise money, you could do it with pretty much the environment. And uh, one of the big initiatives was incubating teams and technologies and spinning out companies. And so I was a founder and key operator in two of those companies, both that had exits. One was a blockbuster IPO, and one was a very very long burn with down rounds, and eventually got acquired. So had the good fortune of seeing both sides of, of what happens in the venture capital finance startup environment. So when did you start uh, Capital 3? Which one's first, Atasi Ventures or Capital 3? Atasi Ventures. So I, you know, I, I obviously started out as an engineer, product developer, and then a company builder. Uh, and again, most of these things I never really planned on doing. It, you sort of find yourself doing the things that you love to do, and, and that's what I did. And um, uh, as a result of my entrepreneurial experiences, I started doing what you might call angel investing, uh, just sort of making my own individual investments, and eventually formed a Tazi Ventures for a couple of purposes. One was sort of, it's my holding company for my personal investments, but also I wanted to incubate some ideas. And one of the ideas that was was 
uh, really important to me was bringing awareness-based leadership development into the startup world. Um, Because I'd been in the corporate world, I'd been in the startup world, and I had personally been doing a lot of what you would call change management training, transformational leadership development, and really came to understand the importance of the awareness that we bring to the situation, whatever we're carrying with us, whatever the situation is calling for, and, Mm -hmm. uh, and using that to reduce risk and to increase success. So that was an idea I had in Tazi Ventures, which eventually I brought to Capita 3, which was formed in 2016. And Mm -hmm. uh, with the idea of, again, I hadn't planned on doing this in my career, but just started to notice really the the issues with uh, seemingly female founders not receiving financing commensurate with the number of founders who were building companies. And so I wanted to step in and really understand what's happening here. Are women getting financed? What are the needs? And did a really deep dive analyzing what was happening and formulated, you know, my own picture and, and, uh, and then decided two things needed to happen. One was to support women in being the leaders that could navigate an environment that didn't necessarily see them for who they were. And so built a program around that. um, And then also, uh, raised a venture fund to invest in these companies with the idea that ultimately we can talk a lot about what's happening, but if we don't do something, nothing changes. So I, I felt those were the two things that I could do and I wanted to do to really change that game for female founders. So that's Capita 3. That's Capita 3. Formed in 2016, we raised our venture fund in uh, our first very, very small fund. You could call it a nano fund. Uh, in uh, just over a million dollars in 2018 just to get in the marketplace and start investing. And we're <clears throat> about the time COVID-19 hit, we're, we were due to go out and start raising fund too. So we're, we're looking at that right now and understanding, understanding, you know, when and how to do that. Okay. And what kind of businesses do you invest in? So we, so we're a venture capital firm. We invest in early stage startups, uh, you know, pre-seed, seed, series A, all in health and healthcare. Uh, and we, we formed the really strong intention to invest only in women CEOs. And back when we launched Capita 3, 2015, 2016, there was a lot happening behind the scenes for women, but not so much was being talked about. So we didn't really know what the pipeline was of female founders. Since then, there's tons of people investing in women. Everybody knows that women, you know, produce good results, excellent results. And a lot of our thesis has gotten proven out since then, but back then we weren't really sure. And so a lot of the firms that were investing in women wanted to invest more broadly in female founders, which may or may not have been a women CEO. And we said, we're going to find the women CEOs because we want to make that statement. We think we'll find phenomenal companies. And so we've been able to do that. We made six investments to date, all women CEOs. And uh, we want to invest in things that help us heal and be healthy. So we want to get out in front of the disease state, and but using evidence-based methods to help us heal and be healthy. And so the, those are the kinds of things that we've been seeking and investing in. Okay. And uh, what about geography? What's uh, your preference? So we <clears throat> we would very much like to invest in the Midwest, and we have one investment in the Midwest, uh, but we do uh, seek investments U.S. wide, and uh, you know, really seeking the best companies wherever they are in the United States. Okay, let's um, talk about. You said you've made six investments. Let's talk about the you know at least a couple or three of these investments. What do they do? What, what stage did they come to you at? And what is it about these particular entrepreneurs or companies that made you want to write the checks? Yeah, great question. Um, you know, I, as kind of a context for that, I've spent my entire career, you know, I've worked with hundreds of startup companies. I've seen thousands of technologies across a very diverse set of industries. and. Um, you know, we have a really strong appetite for things that are game-changing in the world. 
that, re that really have the capacity to change something really significant, um, and here specifically in health. So that's kind of the first filter. And we didn't, we knew we wanted to invest early stage. So anywhere from pre-revenue, you know, kind of got an idea, haven't commercialized it yet, all the way to have some revenue and I need capital to scale. So we have investments from literally pre-seed to, uh, I think we did a bridge round to a series, um, series B. But most of our investments are more seed, you know, you know, on their way to series A. Uh, and um, we were looking for CEOs that have a vision and understand the milestones that are required at these very early stages to step toward that vision. Because early stage companies, it's just the founders, right? There's not that much there. So it's really looking for, you know, what is your vision? How grounded is that in reality? Do you really understand the market, uh, the market segmentation that you can literally sell into? Do you have product market fit? And if you don't, what steps are you taking to demonstrate product market fit? What customer discovery do you have on deck? And just really looking to see on that spectrum of unknown how much work they've done to really identify, here's what I've done, here's what I need to do in order to prove out this risk. So we're very happy to invest in a very high risk early stage company so long as they're demonstrating that understanding of here's the process or here are the milestones and the capital that I'll need to raise along that path. Um, so that's that's very important to us. And then, you know, kind of the basic things, very high integrity uh, person. Um, uh, say, the best way to do this segment, this portion of the interview is to actually talk about examples. So talk about okay. specific examples, at least two specific examples. Sure. Yes. So one company we invested in, um, Sugar Logics is the name of the company. They're a Bay Area company developing um, um, uh, what are called uh, milk sugars found in, in human breast milk um, and with the idea of adding that to formula. 80% of women in the United States are, are using formula to feed their babies and formula is really associated mm -hmm. with serious health risks. Um, mm -hmm. And so they want to add the key ingredient from breast milk into those products so that uh, people can start their life in a much, much better uh, way and be healthier. The CEO and for, a company, for a venture like this, what do you want to see in by way of validation to want to be willing to write a check? For this company, we wanted to make sure that the market was really there and that she'd built a team that could address the market because it's their pre their pre revenue pre commercialization. Um, she was the CTO and by circumstances became the CEO. So you know, fresh out of PhD. Um, and so just really looking for those factors that she could build that team and move forward. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's do another one. Uh, another company we invested in is called Astarte Medical. Um, this is a more, a much more mature uh, set of founders. They'd been, uh, uh, they had been uh, venture capital investors themselves. They raised their own fund. They invested in about 10 companies, saw a really phenomenal opportunity in the NICU, which is the needle, um, neonatal intensive environment for premature babies, um, transforming the, their feeding protocols. And so these two women, uh, very experienced, understood what it takes to build companies, what's an investable, scalable startup company. So that was an easy check to write once we validated the market opportunity. And how do, you, how do these companies find you or come to you? What's the, you know, what is the source of your deal flow? Well, as I'm sure you've heard many times, often it's just referrals. Every company we've invested in has been a referral from someone in our network. Um, yeah. And, you know, we see a thousand companies a year, so um, referrals are a key part of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. That's the way the industry works. Yes. All right. Um, and and thousand companies a year, What what are the trends in your deal flow? What are you seeing? We see a really broad spectrum of companies across uh, stage. Again, we're all pretty much seed Series A. Um, we see. Uh, I'm, I'm think, talking about more the technology trends. What uh, is? I always ask for this trend, ask this trend question to people to just get a feel for what is, you know, what is happening in the pipeline. What's, 
you know, what, what, is, what is the thought process of the pipeline of entrepreneurs who are trying to raise money right now? So we were looking for, and we see companies in digital therapeutics, um, so transitioning from pharmaceuticals to more um, to other means of healing from disease. We see, we're seeing quite a bit in genomics and the microbiome. That's a really important space to us. Um, that's a yeah. really hard, that's a hard space to invest in because it's so early. Um, uh, yeah. And food as medicine is a, is a super important space to us. We mainly see what I would call he healthy food as opposed to evidence for this food is going to make a difference in your health. Um, and we've seen a lot in women's health and uh, women's health as applied to cancer, as applied to menopause, um, and so on. So those are some okay. examples. Very good. Pamela, you're staying for the entrepreneur pitches, yes? I am, yes. Very good. All right. So let's start the entrepreneur pitches. Folks, I want to set expectations for those who are going to be pitching today or in any of the, the subsequent sessions. Remember, this is a safe working session. We are completely on your side. This is not Shark Tank. We do not have the agenda of entertaining an audience and, and raising TV ratings. This is completely serious working session. You can bring whatever it is that you need help with and you want to discuss, and we will work, we'll brainstorm and, and strategize on that. There is, uh, you don't need to be nervous. You don't need to be defensive. Now, you, you may get feedback here that you may disagree with. That's fine. It's your venture. You will do whatever you want to do at the end of the day. But the feedback you will get is based on experience, so you may want to consider the feedback and see how you're going to address the issues that are coming up here. Remember one thing. Not all businesses can raise money. Not all businesses should raise money and raising money doesn't guarantee success. So we are going to start with Anthony Dobash in San Jose, California. Anthony, please unmute your line and tell us what you're working on. Well, thanks for the opportunity, guys. Uh, appreciate, uh, appreciate it. Uh, appreciate what you're doing, Sermana. And uh, I want to shout out to Pamela, too, not only as a fellow double E, but uh, you know, I think your your emphasis on on women as CEOs is uh, is laudable, first of all, but also well placed because in my professional experience, I find that women make better leaders, and and that's not just because my wife is one of them. But uh, um, so kudos to you on that. Um, mm -hmm. So our company is called Augment and Sense Technologies. Uh, that's a picture of me there in uh, commuting to work in Maine on my bicycle in the middle of February. Uh, not something I would uh, recommend for, the, for everybody. Um, but uh, what we're trying to do is we're enhancing safety through technology enhanced in awareness. And uh, let's, let's go through, so next slide. Oh, you already got there. We're, no, previous slide, please. Thank you. We're applying some extraordinary emerging technologies that will fuel autonomous vehicles, gesture recognition, and speech enhancement to give outdoor enthusiasts and urban commuters superhero-like senses to promote safety and convenience. Next slide, please. The typical cell phone user touches his or her phone over 2,500 times a day. This is fine if you're sitting on the couch, but what if you're snowboarding or riding a bike? Next slide. What if you could interact with your mobile tech at the same time being hyper aware of hazards in your immediate environment? Next slide. We make devices that save lives by making smartphone use distraction free and dangerous situations plainly obvious. According to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, transportation fatalities have decreased dramatically in all segments with, with the exception of those that are the most vulnerable as shown here. Reasons include reliance on mobile tech, increased urbanization, and the trend toward micromobility. Next slide. The technologies now exist to reverse this trend, and we call this confluence augmented awareness. With these three technology building blocks, we're giving users access to mobile tech and environmental hyper-awareness without the distractions of a screen. 
System inputs in the form of gestures and outputs in the form of directional sound are intuitive and non-absorptive, meaning that you can stay focused on what's ahead. Next slide, please. Our business model is simple. We we'll sell an array of modular hardware and software that can be mixed and matched depending upon need. A premium model will be applied to the mobile app for adding gesture-initiated actions and controlling third-party accessories, such as adventure cameras and so forth. The enabling technologies are now mature enough to commercialize. Next slide. The market offers a $1.6 billion opportunity for runners, cyclists, and alpine sports in the USA alone. We will establish a beachhead with a snowboarding community and establish close ties with safety, health, and wellness advocacy groups. Next slide. The go-to-market starts with direct-to-consumer sales through traditional online channels and advances through integration into garments and micro-mobility partners. Next slide. Our team is notable for the diversity of backgrounds and the experiences that touch every aspect of running a successful consumer electronic startup, both technical and otherwise. All of our, all of our members have startup experience. Next slide. The gesture, module, the gesture recognition module has decreased in size while improving in accuracy with similar progress for the other modules. We're really excited about bringing these life-saving capabilities to others that wish to reduce their carbon footprint and build exercise into their day, but are legitimately concerned about safety and convenience. We started this for us and we'll finish it for them. Next slide. So that's my presentation. Um, I guess we can open it up for questions, but I have some specific questions for you, uh, Sermana. Um, do you want me yes, to start with that or? Questions. I'm sorry? That's what we're going to focus on, your questions. Okay. So my first question is, uh, for hardware startups, how does one solve the hardware startup catch 22? So what I mean by that is it takes money to make money and it takes um, you know, money to make a product, and it takes traction to uh, to attract uh, venture capitalists and, and angels. So you can. So the problem is, is that with a software startup, you know, the barrier to entry is very, very small in terms of money. Um, so how do we get beyond that? In that, what what would be your suggestion in terms of how to get beyond the catch twenty two of a hardware startup? Let's stay on that question for a moment. Okay. You said you got some early traction in the snowboarding community. Did I hear that right? Um, well, it depends on how you define traction. So, uh, and this is, uh, you know, matter, semantics matter, right? So, in my, in my experience, traction to venture capitalists and angel investors means revenue. So, we are pre-revenue. We are a pre-revenue hardware startup, although we have traction in terms of, uh, you know, customer interest and we've done a lot of work in terms of, you know, lean startup methodologies like getting out of the building and asking so people. So what does for, customer interest mean? Uh, let's zero in on customer interest. Like who is yeah. interested? Is it consumers? Are we talking B2C here? B2C, that's correct. Um, so are you, uh, I, I don't, uh, if you're familiar with the lean startup methodology that involves um, making a thesis about your product and then going out and testing. No, no, no. no. Let's thesis. not go into that. I, I'm okay. let's answer gotcha. my questions. I don't have enough time to go into lean startup Fine. methodology. We we have a very lean startup methodology here. Okay. So uh, in the snowboarding community, in trying to sell B two C your mm -hmm. product. Yeah. What have you done? Like, is there a, is there a list? Is there a mailing list of B two C prospects that you have created? Yeah, I mean, we, we, you know, that's, I was describing the lean starter methodology because that's what we've done. We've gone out to amongst our constituents, that is our potential customers, and asked them, would you buy this and how much would you pay for it? And, and how, many, of, how many names do you have on that list who have said that they are interested in buying this product? Well, about 75% uh, say they'd be interested in buying the product. Uh, our list is uh, uh, about 250 individuals. Um, so that's, and what is the price point at which you have done this uh, validation testing? $129. $129. So yes. we have a couple of hundred people willing to buy a $129 product. Correct. 
And what what do you need to be able to sell this product to these couple of hundred people? What kind of what funding do you need to be able to do that? Well, for the um, for the for a paid pilot, um, uh, we would need about thirty five thousand dollars of of capital uh, to get a hundred piece uh, pilot build together. So this is not fundable. You're going to have to either do friends and family funding for this, or you're going to have to figure out some way to do advanced selling. You know, if you, if these 200 people are really interested in this product, Mm -hmm. are they willing to place an advance order for your product? Okay. And uh, then you manufacture it that way. But this is a stage of business that is not fundable by institutional ventures or professional investors. So this is where you're going to have to either do friends and family or do advanced selling of, since in a hardware situation, an advanced sale selling works. And $129 is not, not, not going to break the bank. So these, um, you know, these customers, potential customers that you are talking to are really serious about buying the product, ask them if they're willing to place an advance order or not. Well, I think you just answered my question. And uh, so how does one solve the hardware startup catch-22? I mean, the the answer I'm hearing is you don't. You just have to accept it and go forward and get get traction in the traditional way that it's selling product. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the way you attract investors, yeah. That's right. Okay, so So the next next question is, how large a role does marketing play in early stage success? Um, I get a lot of solicitations. I've already spent 10 minutes. I have three other people that I have to work with. Okay. So let's hold these oh, darn it. Yeah, okay. we can go back to Q&A at the end of the session after I've gone through the other presenters, and I'll ask, answer more of your questions then, okay? Will do. Thank you. All right. Shalender Singh from Mill yes. of California. It looks like uh, we have I a lot of day out for people today. So hi, Shalwana. How are you? Hello. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, we can hear you. Okay, hi, it's Ramana. Hi, everyone. So we are working on an online portal to generate and share AI documents, uh, which allow people to generate documents by simply talking to an AI chatbot. Uh, for the presentation, I would like to invite my uh, co-founder, Vishnu Priya, who will be going through the presentation. Vishnu Priya. Thanks, Shalindra. Hi, Sharmana. Hi, Pavel. Yeah. I'm Vishnu Priya, and uh, let me start with the team introduction. Shalinda Singh, he is a CEO CTO of Prisotech. He is an alumnus of IIT Bombay and has 20 years of experience in artificial intelligence, computer vision, natural language processing, and data mining. Prior to that, Shalinda was a computer scientist in advanced technology groups at Adobe. And the second founder, Shani Shinivasan, he is not available today. Uh, he is CMO of Prisotech. He is an analyst of UC Berkeley, UT Texas Austin, and NIT Trichy, with more than 30 years of experience in software industry in Silicon Valley. His successful ventures as an investor's advisor were in WebEx, Skype, and Savvy. Prior to that, he was a VP at Tipco Software. And at last, me, Vishnu Priya, I'm the CEO of Prisotech. I am an analyst in computer science and worked in many domains like such as computer vision, NLP, AI technologies. I have 17 years of experience as an entrepreneur. Prior to Prisotech, I had a company in India. Uh, Do you mind moving to the next slide, please? Thank you. So our basic problem which we are solving is creating any form of documents such as pitch decks, proposals, plan, info brochure are a big challenge and a time-consuming process for anyone. Current solutions help customers by providing templates and designs, but each project has different requirements, uh, which requires writing a lot of custom content along with the number crunching and planning. And then again, they try to fit in them to the selected templates. Even the most experienced person, uh, as per my experience, typically takes three to four weeks from the start end, and which costs significantly cash and the opportunity. So here we are proposing a solution. Our AI chat box and document creator uses an AI chat box to interact with the user to understand their requirements, ask relevant questions, and then generate fillable information forms. 
also suggests relevant template, thus generate the complete proposal document with all the supporting data and images. As per our estimates, uh, as per our estimation, this improves the entire turnaround time by 99%. So our target customers are any professional or companies such as consulting companies, startups, freelancers, businesses, entrepreneurs who are often busy creating business plans or raising funds, proposals to respond to RFPs and marketing and sales pitches. So all the companies they are all always you know they are creating some kind of document. So do you mind moving to the next slide? So here we are in the market segment of productivity tools to create, manage, and share documents. And here are some of the facts about the market size. Like every day, 1.6 billion internet users, they're creating documents and contents on different, different platforms. And roughly, if you see, uh, to create a presentation document, it takes almost six hours. And it, 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 it would cost like dollar one twenty two business. So, and uh, the another market analysis says that 30 million presentation documents alone being created daily. So if you just calculate the overall cost, then it, it is around $3.6 billion per day cost for just creating that presentation document every day. So if you want to define our customer, so uh, as I told you before, the people and companies who need to create many documents with multiple versions and whose success in business depends upon the quality of documents, business plans, marketing brochures, responses to RFPs. Do you mind moving to the next slide? Thank you. So here is our customer acquisition strategy. We are planning to partner with the professional fundraising channels where we integrate our solution with their systems to provide higher quality services to their clientele. And the second category of the customers we plan to target are startups, as they are the one, uh, uh, sorry, uh, startups. So. One of the resources of information are crowdfunding platform, Angelus, Start Engine. So we uh, and, and also we plan to use LinkedIn and Google Ads for direct marketing. And as far as for the regular businesses, we plan to partner with software solution providers who sell their services and solutions to large businesses on a commission basis. Uh, next slide, please. So we take some kind of customer validations. And so for that, we have engaged with a few fundraising platforms who are very interested in inter integrating our solutions with their product. We uh, we did some uh, direct surveys which, which were paid uh, through Facebook. And we have also conducted a primary market survey and we got a very good response from 56% of the respondent and they said it is extremely useful. And also we have given uh, direct demos to a couple of the prospect customers and we got a very positive response. Next slide, please. So there are a couple of challenges which we are facing right now. And one was like very you know, unforeseen kind of thing like the post COVID-19 funding market. And it has become very challenging and we, we have talked to a few investors, you know, before talking to you, to be very frank, and they're asking us to show some traction, which requires launching the product in the market with the right quality, security, and features. And again, which will require fun and which we don't have it. That's why we are here. And the other part is like the data infrastructure where we, because our system, it's based on uh, very high computational resources. So we need minimum investment for that too, to reach a, a certain level of the prototype. So this is all from my side. And if you have any questions, we are here to answer. So um, let me address your primary issue from where I sit. And this yeah. is something that everybody in the room who's listening to this presentation should make a note of. If you're trying to do an AI startup, investors are very likely, very unlikely to invest in a concept. It has nothing to do with COVID-19. The stage at, of, that you're presenting is not a fundable situation. AI startups always come with a question mark, does this work? 
So you talked about a bunch of different go-to-market strategies. Let's go back to the slide where you were presenting the kinds of customers that you want to go sell to. You want to sell to, you know, entrepreneurs creating business plan presentations. You want to sell to responses to RFPs, marketing brochures, et cetera. These are, each of these are different products from, I know a lot about AI. I've done AI startups. So, you know, each of these are different companies. And um, I don't buy that you can impact an entrepreneur's pitch presentation that effectively because, you know, I swim, I live my life in entrepreneur pitches. Um, and the kinds of work that we do is not something that you can automate. There's, like, tremendous amount of strategic planning. There's a tremendous amount of you know, testing this, testing that, go test this market, go test that segment, change the segment, pivot, this and that. This is not a document generation problem. So I think my advice to you would be don't try to sell into this segment because you're not solving the problem of the segment. The problem of fundraising for this segment is not creating a PowerPoint presentation or a keynote presentation. That's not the issue. Where I think you may find a better product market fit is in this response to RFPs question that you're asking. So if you uh, do your marketing validation, market validation in the segment of maybe consulting companies or companies that bid for RFPs, that, you know, submit RFPs, and, and you can potentially uh, create engagements as services contracts uh, even, where you know, if, if they have substantial issues in wanting to speed up and make more efficient the RFP process and you think you can make a substantial impact on such a situation, especially in large enterprises, large consulting companies where there are you know, very large repositories of RFPs that they fill out that may solve both your problems, which is accessing a data set on which to train your AI algorithms, as well as having customers who are potentially interested in giving you services contracts to build such a solution to help them address the problem. And that basically the way we categorize this way of Solving the chicken and egg is bootstrapping using services. So my recommendation to you is to go figure out the RFP selling process of large companies and try to do bootstrapping using services. So uh, can I respond to this? Uh, I'm Shalinda. Sure, please. So you know, so one of the things you know, I mean, so I do not really agree with that. You know, that doing the business presentations like it's a very important part of this, and we are not just trying to do dumb presentation based on templates. So our system is able to do unsupervised learning from the web. So we have, we have like, couple, we are creating a couple of demos. And this, this, there's a concept called as AI document, you know, so this is like different than what we have been thinking about. Our mental picture of document is like, it's a presentation, it's an Excel sheet, it's a market survey. And of course, but that's of course there, but you know, there is a knowledge base behind it. So what we are building is a knowledge base, which is knowledge base, not in terms of like database, but in terms of AI algorithm, which are able to take uh, like you know uh, unsupervised training from the web and able to translate it to a much better you know so let's say you want to do uh, markets uh, you know competitive analysis how do you do that so competitive analysis takes a huge amount of time unless you can you want to create a slide you know but the, the real competitive analysis real market analysis takes a huge time and what do you need to do that what you need to do is you know you need to go to web. Like then find then out, your positioning uh, is incorrect, Shailendra. Your positioning is wrong. If you say that you're trying to do competitive analysis, then you should position your product as a competitive analysis product, not a document preparation product. product. No, no, so what and, I'm saying, and the other problem, hold on, the other problem is that don't try to sell to startups. Startups are not going to give you large, right, large checks for you to solve their problems. Right, right. That's they're so that's bothered. They're that. worried about their own survival and their their own business 
uh, you know, movement. Right. They're not going to write you check to solve your problem of your own funding. So go find, go try to sell to large companies who can, who have a serious burning problem where you can impact it, and they are willing to write you a check against which you can deliver some value. Startups the okay. wrong category to, for you to start to try trying to sell to. Okay, so that advice I take. But what I'm trying to say is, you know, there's a complete paradigm shift. So here, you know, in this system, what it encodes, the AI document encodes is not really the, uh, you know, design at all. So what it encodes is your intention. So when you talk to a chatbot, it takes you like- It doesn't matter. Like, then your positioning is wrong. Then don't position the company as a document management, a document preparation company. Not second separation, it's document generation and management. So I, I, but like, it's, it's a wrong hard. positioning. Yeah. I know a lot about positioning challenges, the wrong positioning. Even when you go to sell to large companies on RFPs, you should position yourself as an RFP preparation company, not as a document preparation company. These things matter greatly. You know, how you position your company will determine whether you're going to succeed in the market or not. Positioning right. is one of the most important things that we focus on incessantly in our program to find product market fit. You position it wrong, you're going to fail in the market. Okay. Um, just a second, let me get Pamela's input on your uh, on your venture here. Pamela, what do you think? I agree completely, Shamana. I mean, I, I just you, you you haven't you haven't shown us the value proposition here. Your thesis is way too broad. I mean, I, there could be something really really interesting here, but it's just so broad and. Broad. We can't really see it. Yes, because you know, I think because it's a very novel concept, so it's very hard to visualize it without you no, know. No, it's not a novel concept at all. It is. This is not a novel concept at all. It is not hard to prove. It's not hard to present. It is hard to position, and you don't know enough about positioning. So learn positioning. This this journey for you is going to become a lot smoother. Okay. This is what you're presenting is not complicated at all. No, no, but, but, but I'm not saying that, you know, what I'm trying to say is, you know, so positioning, I agree that with you that your positioning can be improved. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is saying, you know, the value proposition, and in my opinion, you know, like once the product is launched, like 90% of the, or 99% of the world document will be created, created using this product. So what I'm saying is, you, it may, you may like to, we may like to narrow down the scope of it, let's say, to, for as a go-to-market strategy, but the product itself, you know, is, so, it doesn't matter. What your technology is capable of doing is irrelevant. What is your go-to-market strategy and now how you position to achieve product market fit is the only thing that matters in the success or failure of a startup. That's the only thing that matters. Let us, let us assume like oh, so. Calendar, can you just listen for a minute? Yeah. We, you may very well have something here, but what we're telling you, we're two very different people looking at this from a diff very different perspective. Your presentation is not telling us what we need to understand to be convinced mm -hmm. that this is unique and valid. So that's, and I could be happy to talk offline, but th that's, that's the, the takeaway here. Okay. Okay. That I agree. All right. We're going to move to the next presenter. We can talk more as after we finish the next two presenta uh, presentations. Sure. sure. So for now, uh, we're going to move to uh, Bayomi Makleshi Ajagona from Nigeria. Hey. Hey, hi, Hello, Shimani. How are you doing today? Hello. How are you doing today? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, yep. we can hear you. Please go ahead. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm going to um, This session has been very, very educating, and uh, I'm glad to be here. Um, we, my name is Abayomi Ajabono, and uh, I'm the founder of Safe Tech International Solutions Limited. I have, um, I study engineering, agricultural engineering, and majored in soil and water conservation, which is um, basically about um, construction in agriculture. Our product is um, Stonewall. And um, that's the name of the product. And basically, it's um, about representing or package, repackaging concrete and some concrete products. Basically, concrete, um, mortar, and um, concrete blocks. The, the normal way to, 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 to sell concrete is to sell them plasticized. That is already in liquid form. But well, we are representing it 
based on certain problems that certain operators in the concrete market are facing. So we want to solve the problem being part of the problems that we are going through that we have gone through as contractors and as builders. Now, um, the value we are adding to, uh, to the product and which we are also offering the customer, please can you go back? in uh, last slide. Can you hear me? Yes, we are yes. on your product yes. slide. Do you want to go back one further? Yeah, just this, this last slide. Just go back one. St no. Other direction. Again, the next slide. OK. Now, the, the value that we are adding to the product is to provide safe, safe um, products that are reliable and are cost effective. Safe in the sense that it gives you the right quality of the product, um, the right cost, the right um, um, mix that you need for all your, for different applications, um, and the right source of raw material and the right, right quality of soft material, um, raw materials. It is reliable because quality is constant, mixes are constant, uh, proportionate mix is constant, and is the same in every batch of production. Cost effective because it is um, about 40% lower than whatever cost that you have in the market. 40% lower than what the plasticide concrete um, producer stars are selling. 40% less than what the traditional concrete uh, producer are. Uh, Abayomi, uh, what is the status of your company? Do you have something? Well, it's a it's a fresh startup, but we we have worked on on our mixes. We have um, also secured some franchise, and um, at the moment we are at the takeoff point, and we are um, trying to get funding to take off. So this is not the kind of company we would get involved in. Uh, we only do IT and IT enabled services. Materials is not in our sweet spot. Okay. And I don't know how you're going to get this funded. A materials company in uh, Nigeria, I, I have no knowledge of how to get a materials company funded before any product, before any validation in Nigeria. This is not it's outside of the scope of my experience oh when you say material um i don't understand your your material in context in your context concrete is a material right yeah concrete is material but we're present we, we are presenting like like a bad a bad cement the way you bag your Portland cement that is the way we're, we're bagging it yeah, dry. That's not my, that's not my speech part. We only do IT and IT enabled services. So this is not going to be, it's not good, not a good use your time, of your time to spend time with us here. Ah, uh, okay. That's All right. Nice. Okay, I'm Chav Jain from Mumbai, India. You are up next. Hello, Saramna. Uh, Thanks for, uh, for for giving me an opportunity to present about uh, Bringle's new product, uh, Design Your Unicorn. Go ahead. Okay, so uh, this whole context, I just want to set up a context before I move ahead. Uh, this, uh, I've been, uh, myself, Anshad Jain, I'm, I'm a founder of Bringle Excellence Limited, uh, UK and India. I have my co-founder Sharmila Devatia is also present on the call, and uh, she she is uh, uh, she's also there on that. Uh, I'll just give you a background about mine. I come from a 
have 18 years plus of experience in uh, in business process engineering, digital transformation, innovation solution, deploying deep deep tech technologies in uh, corporates, uh, you know, global corporates in various domains, BFSI, telecom, retail, logistics, and various other domains. Uh, last seven years, I've been building up multiple. I'm a serial entrepreneur. Have set up uh, five uh, startups till now. Bringle being the most valued startup, and now we are coming up with our new SaaS-based uh, platform on for supporting uh, businesses. To uh, it's a basically a business uh, end-to-end roadmap uh, accelerator program, which uh, works on from various concepts of training, mentoring, coaching, and with the diagnostics tools. So, uh, Design Your Unicorn is, uh, is is an initiative to uh, bring 100 unicorns in a very more structured and systematic way. Uh, so, if you can just shift, uh, move to the next slide. Uh, so, Design Your Unicorn is a SaaS-based, highly scalable platform that basically connects mentors to entrepreneurs to make them investment ready in a very staged and systematic approach using our five-stage certified program. And eventually, we are targeting to make them more scalable and sustainable businesses. Uh, next slide, slide, please. I mean, these are the top four reasons which we have identified after researching out in uh, various. What are the top four reasons? I can't read your slides. They're too small. OK. So the first one is the target uh, market problems and the business model failures. This is typically at the rate of 40 percent. This is uh, after comparing with various data points on the on the Google search. Uh, running out of the cash is the another area wherein it goes for around 29 percent. Poor management team. The team makes it very important. 23 percent, and there are some other problems within range of 8 percent. So typically. Uh, we have tried to understand where does the maximum startup space, and based on that, this entire design your unicorn methodology or post five stage process has been defined. Uh, you know, I'll tell you, I this is the world. This is my world. You're coming to, and I don't agree with what you're saying here. So it's okay. your first premise already. You have lost me. Okay, no problem. So, uh, see, uh, we are not trying to uh, kind of jump into anybody's uh, investors or uh, accelerator model. We are actually our enablers or basically having a tool which will help uh, give more data oriented approach. That's where our entire focus with this BYU model. Uh, so rather than I'll getting into. Uh, here's, here's one more piece of feedback here. We don't believe in mentoring networks, we don't believe mentoring networks work. And I'll give you a pointer of something you should look at. I have a presentation on our YouTube channel called Why Don't Why Mentoring Networks Do Not Work. You should go take a look at that. Sure, sure, definitely. So definitely it is not just a mentoring. Mentoring is an after piece into it. It's more about a diagnostic tool uh, at five stage process, which is what DYU is all about. It is nothing about mentoring as a primary component into it. So yes, mentors, will be required, but this is only at a supportive services on and required basis, depending on the on the you know startup to startup. But for us, it is more about certifying them on to which stage they are in and with a more structured approach. And there are there is a complete framework by which we can connect and you know we can actually figure out the seven pillars of a success uh, sustainable organization. So that's where we are our focus is it's a complete tool and a framework. So it's not a mentoring system. We do have a mentoring system and complete uh, set of mentors with us, but that is only as an after effect. Once we get into a diagnostic tool and figure out where does the startup stand. So it is more objective based approach, which we are trying to bring in with this uh, tool rather than, uh, you know, getting into the shoes of any investor group or uh, or any accelerator group. We are not the accelerators. We are not the investors. So, what is your business model? What are you trying to do? Sell this mentoring to uh, this diagnostic tool to whom? So these are. So if you can just move to the another slide, I can just share that uh, with you. So uh, I'm just quickly browsing, brushing it through, and then we can go to the next slide. So this is basically the certification levels of five levels of certification. We do have our content on digital books, e-learning programs, live classes, which we have a complete daily learning platform on that. Uh, the mentoring and coaching, which comes as a second step once the certification diagnostic happens, and we realize so can that you there is a I, my, One of the things I'm, that you, I'm, I'm not able to understand, and I think Pamela would agree, 
we don't understand what business we are talking about here. Who, what are you trying to sell to whom? Okay. So who is this, who is you, buying this diagnostic tool? Can you move to, can you move to the next slide? Yeah, just, just be there. So we have the three, uh, you know, it's an interactive point uh, of uh, startups, investors, and, uh, you know, the mentors. That is what the overall uh, thing which we are targeting into that startups is basically we are looking at from our diagnostic tool that which stage of the, you know, which stage of the, you know, level of so unicorn what they are in. Is this a, are you, is this a business? Are you yes. pitching a business? Yes. Okay. Who pays? Who pays for this service, so this value is, proposition? So this is paid by the startup. So there are way, two, three ways by which we are approaching this, and I'm just coming to that. Uh, one is the startups who are looking for, you know, who are looking for a diagnosis in terms of where they are currently. There are investors who would like to know whether whichever, in, you know, startup they are investing in, are they investable? And even after once they get, they invest into that, they can actually monitor with our, you know, with their key metrics and data-driven approach by which they can see that how the traction is happening eventually over a period of time uh, from a business KPI's point of view. So that's where we so, are trying to connect So you expect it to startups to pay, you expect investors to pay. Both of those constituencies are supposed to be your paid customers in your assumption, yes? Yes. Okay. And what is the current status of this Toolkit. Do you have a software built already, or is this concept stage? So we have already built the uh, complete tool Excel framework right now. We have okay. not built it up into a AI model at this point in time because there are various permutation and combinations. We have actually identified 105 uh, modules in which uh, you know it will be a multiple permutation combination which will be required for a sustainable business. And that we want to test it out with a couple of uh, startups right now. So we did a series called 21 Days Business Sustainability Challenge, where we got 80 plus experts from 30 plus countries and uh, who have, you know, kind of talked about on that 21 topics or the of, of that or, or under four themes, uh, thought leadership and all that. That doesn't validate and anything. That doesn't validate anything. The, the key thing that you need to validate, if you want to build this business, the key thing you need to validate is can you build a piece of software that entrepreneurs and investors are willing to pay you for? So you are right, uh, Saramna here. Uh, it's, it's definitely we are looking at at this point in time uh, for that same. And we have got around 50 odd, uh, you know, startups who have kind of getting into a certification level. They are into that, going through that certification process. And uh, apart from that, we are also developed generating revenues from the trainings and uh, other e-learning uh, programs and the live classes, which we have on the various modules, which they look for, you know, uh, for from the perspective of growth of their own startup. So there are uh, two or three uh, revenue sources, which we are looking at. And initially for this tool, we are testing it out a little bit uh, on a on a free basis you know so that we can kind of uh, fine tune the model and, uh, and then we slowly built it up into into a completely ai based tool because there are going to be a lot of uh, changes which are going to be data which we need to require onto that but we have built up the entire excel framework uh, from all the levers of uh, seven levers of uh, organization so what is your question what brings you here so what I am looking at is, uh, Saramna, I think you have started with that uh, from that perspective, uh, is that as soon as I started this presentation, you've actually asked, uh, you said that you, I'm coming into your world. So the idea here is that in this presentation, I am not trying to become an investor and we are, we are not trying to become a, an accelerator. We are more of a diagnostic tool and eventually our target is to bring out of you know that entire uh, you know maze or a business maze we we kind of helping people with respect to the right uh, uh, model or a you know data based model data based objective oriented approach 
and eventually bring in unicorns out of it. So that's the whole mm-hmm. idea into this process. So how do you think we should place this or this this uh, position this or this positioning is needs to be changed is what my question is. For me, it doesn't work at all. I, I'm going to actually let Pamela ask, answer the question first and I'll answer afterwards. Pamela, go ahead. I hear a passion here. I'm not sure I hear a, a business. And, uh, and I think the key is that, as Shimana said, it, it, it's very difficult for startups to pay for something like this. As an investor, I wouldn't pay for it. You know, this process of certification, I don't know how you certify a startup to these different stages. I mean, this, this isn't, to me, this isn't what a startup would need to really uh, validate its path forward. The number one reason companies fail is because, in my experience, is because of what's called product market fit. And, um, uh, and so you're, you're, you're taking companies through stages where, you know, it wouldn't even be clear if, if product market fit has been established. Um, in which case all the other stages would be irrelevant. And the other thing I would say, and I'm not, I'm not saying you don't have anything. I don't know enough yet to know if you have anything or not, but I've, I, like Shimana, have spent a ton of time with incubators, accelerators. I teach the National Science Foundation i value proposition design course, so this is kind of in my world too, but um, uh, I, it's really lacking context for all of the tools and resources that are available in the United States at least um, and so I would say you should really research those and understand what already exists. There's a crowdfunding company, I can't remember the name of it right now, that has a sort of this diagnostic tool for the companies that post on their platform. If I can, uh, if I can think of it, I'll, I'll, I'll share it with Maureen or, and, uh, so you can receive it. But you need that analysis to see where you fit on that spectrum for sure. So um, very, very much in mind with my thinking as well, um, Anshav. Uh, if you go to the One Million by One Million website, we have a free diagnostic tool, which is the self-assessment. That's where we ask people to start. Is like, can you answer these questions? These are the questions investors would ask you. We want you to answer these questions yourself. If you get stuck, you need to learn methodology. That's how we, you know, that's one of the most popular sections of our website. But these are not questions that you can automate in any way or you can evaluate in any way uh, because every venture is different. The answer each of these ventures will have to those questions is different. So no AI can interpret the answers. You try, I mean, people can say yes or no. Do you know, do you have this? Do you have that? And they can say yes or no. Now that yes or no can be completely wrong because like most, a lot of the first time entrepreneurs don't know what they're doing in the amount of, you know, lack of knowledge for a first time entrepreneur is immense. So I, again, I know a lot about AI as well as designed AI products. I don't think this is something that can be done in AI. So that's another problem you're going to face in trying to put this in. If you have something in Excel, you want to put that in AI. This is not something that you can put in AI. It's not going to work. Okay. Uh, I I do appreciate uh, your time and uh, thoughts, uh, Pamela and Saramana. Thanks for sharing your thoughts. I think I will definitely go back and, uh, you know, look around a little bit more, do more research on this and how we can make it as, as as a business and Pamela, I will uh, take your statement. Uh, you said it looks like a passion, not a business, and I will try to work on that. And uh, we'll you know we'll see how we can make it as a business. Saramna, if it is possible, I would really want to connect uh, you know sometime again, uh, maybe on a you know with my team to understand uh, how we can kind of help and see or ex- take your experience uh, from this you know from a Probably, you know, from a development point of view, not from an investment point of view, and uh, and and any kind of support which we can take up. So, if you have some, if you can spend some time, then it will be really great. So, I'm sure I don't spend any more time beyond these free roundtables. I do not spend any more time with any entrepreneur unless you're part of the One Million by One Million program. So, I'm going to talk about that in a moment. So, hang on. Listen to that portion, and then we can talk after uh, after that segment is over. We can do more Q and A. So, 
Folks, I'm going to um, tell you how to use One Million by One Million to get more help, but I want you to all know one thing and really appreciate one thing is that if you want to be an entrepreneur, you have to figure out how you're going to be a business. The kind, we are not, we don't do nonprofits here. We do businesses that have to acquire customers, have to generate revenue, have to generate profit. That's the definition of a business. That is the definition of entrepreneurship as far as we are concerned. Financing is optional, exit is optional, but revenues and profits are not optional. So you, you, know, you can't really come up with a business idea that cannot be translated into a business that doesn't monetize. That, is, that doesn't fit the definition of a business. This is really something that you have to internalize and, and you have to manage yourself such that this is on track. And another point I'm gonna make is about AI companies. Investors have tremendous skepticism about AI companies. So most, more often than not, AI companies don't raise any funding because unless you can show that your AI works, people are not willing to write checks. The only exception is if you have built an AI company and have made a success of an AI company and you are the expert, the AI expert, who people believe that based on your track record you can deliver an AI product, that is the only exception if you've done it before. That's the only exception. Otherwise, if you just tell them, I'm gonna do an AI company based on such and such com concept and please write me a check, this is not a fundable situation at all. So we have, you know, within one million by one million, we're doing a lot of AI companies right now because AI is one of the big trends in our industry. And we have figured out how to manage these situations, what, we, what needs to, how to solve the chicken and egg. There's a lot of chicken and egg that needs to be solved and we have figured out how to solve those chicken and egg issues. We have a lot of methodology and, and you know, mechanisms in which, with which we navigate these AI companies. But please keep this in mind. If you come to me with a concept that I'm gonna build this AI company and please get me funded, more often than not, I'm gonna tell you that that's not a doable situation. You're gonna to need to do a lot of different things before we can get to that you know, possibility of funding before you become quote unquote fundable. So um, if you like what we're doing here, as you see, we did four, uh, four discussions today. We are extremely frank and, you know, in telling you what is doable, what is, what is the problem with your venture. This is, this is not for somebody who's looking for a pat in the back. I'm not gonna tell you what you, need, what you want to hear. I'm gonna tell you what you need to hear, what is the reality, and you know, I would expect that you take that and process that feedback and not be defensive about it. Um, in terms of resources, everything is at 1mby1m.com. You will find a terrific blog series that has been going on since 2006 and has over a thousand case studies and continuous trend analysis and so on and so forth. You will learn a lot just by following the blog. I mean, I have talked to so many entrepreneurs who have come to pitch me their ventures once they have reached five million in revenue, and that is our cutoff for doing these stories on the blog, who have been following this blog for a decade. And they've learned a lot, then gone on to build their businesses and so on and so forth. And every time I encounter such a discussion, I just feel great about it that, you know, people are really learning from the work we are doing. And, and that is true globally today. The Entrepreneur Journeys book series is actually derived out of our case studies. We have 12 case study based books. If you're trying to learn a particular topic, you can use this book series. They're all available as digital books from Amazon. Bootstrapping using services, which came up in today's discussion, is one of the volumes in that series. You may want to look at it if you decide to pursue that route. We also have that as a module in our online curriculum. So
So with these free roundtables, what we are doing right now are available every week. Over 150,000 people have attended. You're very welcome to continue to use these to learn also. The full acceleration program from 1 million by 1 million is 1M by 1M premium. If you go to our website, there's a detailed explanation of what to expect. We provide you with extensive methodology guidance. We have a terrific online curriculum. We help you with business development. We give you strategy consulting in similar sessions. You could call it mentoring. You could call it coaching. You could call it consulting, whatever, but we have private roundtables like these. We do not use a mentoring network. We do not believe in mentoring networks for a reason, and if you want to understand why, go to our YouTube channel and look up why mentoring networks do not work. We do help you with financing. We have a terrific investor network. If you go to the seed capital section on our blog, you'll find interviews of, with investors in our community. There are podcasts, there are video interviews, there are text interviews. Go spend some time there to familiarize yourselves with how investors think. And that will give you a, both a feel for our community as well as a feel for how investors think. And just like you're looking for product market fit, you will have to achieve investor entrepreneur fit Otherwise, you're not going to get funded. So that's 1 million by 1 million premium. I talked about uh, to Unmed, we talked about the self-assessment. This is actually our diagnostic tool. You need to go and try to assess yourself to see if you can answer these questions. These are the questions investors would ask you. Can you answer these questions satisfactorily? If you get stuck on methodology issues, you can also go do 1M by 1M Basic, which is our curriculum only option. The digital curriculum is available for $99 a month and you can learn. Um, it's the entire curriculum, all case studies, everything is available there. Um, so in any case, you can go dig around on the website. You will find details about the premium program, the basic program, FAQs, video FAQs. Just Try to understand what this program is all about. The curriculum is described in detail. We have over a thousand successful entrepreneur case studies, including 100 plus unicorns, 400 plus venture funded companies, and other 400 plus bootstrap companies. Um, our methodology is lean, capital efficient bootstrap startups. The philosophy is bootstrap first, raise money later. And that's because that's the way the investment industry works. People do not fund concepts unless you're a repeat entrepreneur with track record. If you have made an investor $100 million, you can walk into that investor's office and say, yes, I'm going to do this again, and I'm going to do this, this, this. Write me a check, and that will work. But if you're a first-time entrepreneur, and most of our community is first-time entrepreneurs, you're not going to succeed in doing this. So that's just the reality of our market. That's it. Next few, um, next three roundtables are June 11th, 18th, and 25th. You're very welcome to reserve a slot to pitch and have a discussion about the venture. Um, we also do online rendezvous on LinkedIn Live, Facebook Live, and Twitter Live. Those are Tuesday mornings, 8 a.m. Pacific time. There are four more left in June. Um, and now we are ready for Q&A. So we do have time. If you want to ask me questions, Pamela questions, we're both here. You're very welcome to ask questions. You can ask questions in the public chat or you can dial in whichever way you want. Uh, I don't have any specific question because you told like, lots of things and I'm just still, you know, turning all that, all those information. But just to tell you, like, you know, because this is my second company, and before that, you know, I had a company in India, and it was quite a successful because that time in 2003 and four, I made like only 10 million revenue for on that company. So there's a little bit of experience I have, and I also learned because I learned that in some other projects. So in a way, like, you know, I have experience of losing money and losing that too. So this is my second company, and uh, actually, you know, we uh, we are not just doing this project. Uh, but what we are talking about the AI chat box. Actually, we as a consulting company have revenue of one million dollars right now, and we have done so many projects for our clients, and there are some of the live and revenue generating for them. 
and they are all first in the world, you know, technologies, and they are into healthcare and some of them are yeah, mostly healthcare. So we are working with them, and they have they got funding from the NIH. And uh, I, I shouldn't be saying this thing, but we are the only one who are developing all the software for them. So in a way, I personally feel that we have that potential and the capability and all the technical things in us that we can deliver this product. So uh, as I said, like, you know, I'm, I'm not telling you something like, you know, any, any question or something like that. Just tell you that there, there are certain things which we understand. And maybe like you're right that we no. could what did I say in the, in the section where I set expectations for these sessions? You can disagree all you want with my feedback or with the feedback of any of the investors who are here. Become mm -hmm. successful. It's your venture. You will make your decisions. I'm not going to make your decisions. It's your venture. You will make your decisions. My job is to give you feedback and assessment of what you're presenting here, which is what I've given you. What you do with that feedback is entirely up to you. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. Yeah. What I would add to that is that there's what you're capable of and then there's how you're communicating it. And, you know, most investors have very little time to digest what you're communicating. So you really owe it to yourself to figure out how to communicate, mm -hmm. what you, why it's of a, a value, why it's scalable and investable. And when you do that, you'll get people, then people will understand if you really have something. I think that's where you need to focus your time is how you're communicating what you're doing. Right, right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Hey, Shra Shraman and Pamela, uh, do, you, do you have any specific advice for hardware startups, um, bootstrapped hardware startups? Depends on what kind of hardware and what kind of price point. If you're trying to do semiconductors, I would say that is not possible to bootstrap sure. most of the time. Um, but in your case, you're doing a $129 product, which very often is something that you do with advanced selling of the products, and then you get into Kickstarter campaigns and, uh, you know, uh, any of the crowdfunding campaigns and do advanced right. selling there. That's, those are the mechanisms of bringing, uh, you know, low dollar value uh, hardware products right. to market. Yeah, the challenge we've had with with uh, crowdfunding is that uh, you need a huge email list to to meet That's your right. your goals in terms of. So crowdfunding That's has exactly really right. turned out to be more of a not a money raising venture, but more of an advertising venture and advertising. Takes right. Money, so but. that's why I asked you the initially I asked you how many people have you talked to and how many of those are willing to buy right. your product. So you right. said 200, well, get 200 yeah. people to write you advance orders and, and fulfill those I orders see. and build it up organically. Gotcha, gotcha. So um, can, can I help like, so I have like some experiences. So I was, we were a consulting company which was into hardware, the space similar problem. And what they did was they made actually a very large prototype, you know, which worked. And then they were able to raise a decent amount of money, actually not from US, they were able to raise it in China. So we have some stake in that. So I'm just saying that it may not be like you can raise money from US, maybe a lot of investors in China, and then you have to still show a prototype, you know, and that prototype need not be at the same scale, you know, you can make a, you can like take off a, let's say what they did was they took off razors from some toys, they took CP from somewhere, they put a Raspberry Pi and build that prototype. So I'm saying that it may be very simple or cheap to build a prototype if you can show its work. Well, and as important as that is that, you know, I didn't hear that you really understood what the customers are looking for. And, uh, you know, I've worked with a lot of companies that have hardware. They're trying to figure out how to bootstrap it. And uh, you have to start with really, really interviewing a lot of people. You've done some of that, but I did not hear that really clear um, value proposition. And so if you, if you land on that, people will get behind you. They will. And so if you haven't got, if you don't have momentum around your idea, it's because you haven't landed on what people really want. That's my sense and, about And what. more on that, you have to get your positioning right. Um, so in your case, you're talking about snowboarding as one of the segments. What are the core requirements of the snowboarding segments? What are the, I mean, if, if, is that your segment? How big is that segment? Is there enough demand in that segment to build a substantial size business. There are lots of questions, there are lots of positioning questions that always come up if you're trying to build a business and especially if you want investors. And, and those questions are not answered in your presentation. Yeah. 
Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, it is a little bit challenging because we are, our full up system is going to require a, a bit more capital. Um, and so what we're doing, the, the strategy that we're applying, and maybe you can help us understand whether this is sound or not, is to take a subset of the market and a subset of the product offering and go to market with that and use that to bootstrap other development. That is, that is what I've done. Like what you have people do a market penetration strategy with a subset of the market, that is not a problem. But the question okay. is, your investor pitch doesn't work at all. Because, it's, okay. again, as Pamela is saying, you're not communicating what That's investors true. need to hear. So if one thing that you may want to get help with, and, and if you decide that you want help from us, we can help you with that, is, mm -hmm. is how to communicate with investors. You, you need, there is a yeah. very systematic way of communicating with investors, and okay. you need to learn how to do that. Yeah, certainly okay, so true. Yeah. Let me introduce you to Irina Patterson. Her email is irina at 1mby1m.com. She's on our team. She will, if you have questions about the program, you can contact her. She will talk to you. Is there any other questions in the audience? Oh, hi. Good morning. This is uh, Sunil from Santa Clara. Um, thanks for hosting this event, which is really uh, Amazing to see uh, all the entrepreneurs and your feedback. So I was curious uh, regarding the uh, market uh, right now with the COVID pandemic. Um, how is the uh, deal investments uh, fundraising uh, right now in this kind of situation? Is this going to um, continue for the end of the year, or there is still uh, uh, VCs investing into the startups. Yes. VCs, are, VCs are still investing. There are a few mm -hmm. things that you have to keep in mind depending on your stage of business. For, for any investor, the first priority is to protect the investments they've already made. So in this scenario, there's a lot of vulnerability in people's portfolios, so they're going to first try to make sure that those vulner vulnerabilities are protected because they'll lose their money. If those companies that they've already invested in go out of business, they'll lose their money. But I've talked to many of my uh, investor friends who are looking at deals, who are looking for deals to invest in. And uh, the, the trick is to find investor entrepreneur fit. So um, mm -hmm. it's not like the venture capital industry has frozen up or anything. The other thing is, the process of raising money is a very lengthy process. You have to talk to a lot of investors. You have to get your ducks lined up to be even able to start yeah. investor discussions. I mean, in our program, we spend many weeks and months preparing entrepreneurs with the right collaterals, the right pitches, and et cetera, before they can even go out to start these discussions. And those dis that process can continue and even the process of talking to investors, pitching to investors, starting the due diligence process, starting a conversation, that process also can continue just fine. And, and you know, right now, everybody's working online. The venture capital world, technology venture capital world is very, very comfortable working online. So I don't see a big problem of starting funding rounds in this in the pandemic situation, that's not the issue. The issue is you may not be fundable. You know, everything I saw today, not yeah. one of these companies I would send out to my investor networks because they're not ready. Okay. Okay? Sure. Thank you. All right. Anybody else? Any other questions? All right. Well, Pamela, thank you for staying. It was a pleasure uh, talking to you and uh, sharing this event with you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for coming today, and uh, we will see you next week. Thanks. Bye bye. Thank you, Pamela, and thank, thank you, Sharma. Thank you all. Bye bye. Bye. bye.